Do you find the idea of planning a through hike a little intimidating? It can be overwhelming because there's so much to think about, but I'm gonna take you through my planning process right now and hopefully that will be a big help to you. This guy's staying home. Sorry, buddy. He didn't get to go. <laughs> well, hey there. It is just a few days before I head out for my through hike on the Pinhoti Trail. And I was planning to go outside and share some tips with you, but as I woke up this morning, it's snowing here in Colorado in late April. I guess that's just uh, par for the course when you live in the Rockies. But I'm going to switch gears and share some information that I think might be very helpful, especially for those of you who have not done a lot of through hiking, and tell you how I prepare for a through hike. It is a month-long process, usually. Uh, my Trans-Catalina Trail hike in January did not take months because I just found out in December that I was going to be able to get campsites. So I had to scramble and plan that hike in about a month. But this Penhody Trail hike and most of my other hikes usually start as the germ of an idea months, if not years, ahead of time. In fact, I keep a list on my phone of all the trails that I would like to hike with some notes about where they are, the best time to hike, and things like that. You may have heard me say on some other videos that my goal for 2024 is to do four through hikes in one year. This Pinhoti Trail hike is going to be my second. The first was the Trans-Catalina Trail, which was only 38 miles, but over 10,000 feet of elevation. And it was spectacular hike on a beautiful island off the coast of California, Catalina Island. So that was really a magical trip. And I wanted to do something a little bit longer for the second trip. The Pinhoti has been on my radar for quite a while because it is a trail that connects between the floor Florida Trail up to uh, the Appalachian Trail. You can take the Florida Trail, a small connector, then the Pinhoti Trail, which is about 350 miles, to the Benton Mackay Trail, and then hit the Appalachian Trail and go all the way up the eastern coast of North America, if you are inclined to do such a thing. I am just going to tackle the Pinhoti Trail and do it with a friend of mine named Gunslinger, who I met on the Colorado Trail last summer. We're going to meet up and spend about four weeks hiking the Pinhoti Trail through Alabama and on into Georgia. My living room is strewn with gear everywhere. This big bag. Well, I got a new Melly, which I might be taking, so I'm still making clothing decisions. My quilt is here getting ready to be packed and things like that. So I've got to make in these very last stages some crucial decisions about my hike. But if we want to go all the way back to about four months ago, when I first decided that I wanted to do the Pinhoti this year, I had to make some other decisions. Like, am I going to fly there? Am I going to drive? And just do some basic research about the trail to see, okay, would it be good to do it in the winter? Would it be good to do it in the spring? And I actually had two options for that. When one was to do it in February and one was to do it in late April and mid-May. Uh, the reason that I chose the later hike was because I wanted to be able to do it with a friend. I didn't want to hike it alone and if I had to go in February, Gunslinger would not have been able to come along. So we decided on the later date. But there are some drawbacks to that. And I knew this because I was doing the research very early on and that is that there's not as much water on the trail later and there will be a lot more poison ivy from what I understand and I am extremely allergic to poison ivy so I'm gonna to have to be careful about that. So basically phase one for me of looking at a through hike happens four to six months in advance and that is just like the kind of overview research of the trail like does this look like an interesting trail? Is it one that I want to do? If so when am I going to do it? Who am I going to do it with? And take care of those kinds of things early on as I make the decision between one trail and another. I would consider those kind of macro decisions and just basically high level information gathering about the trail because as time goes by in that span of four to six months that I have for planning, once I've decided to do a trail, I can do a whole lot more research and we'll talk about that as we go through this process. Once I get down to two or three months before the hike, I'm really starting to dive into logistics. I've probably made the decision by that point of whether I'm going to drive to the trail or if I need to fly or take a train or some other type of transportation. In this case, I'm going to be flying from Denver and I booked my flights early. I try to do that just because I want to save money on flights and also to be able to plan my other logistics around the time that I'm going to be arriving. So flying from Denver going east typically requires an early morning flight. I'm going to be out of here at 7 a.m. I'm flying to Atlanta and then from there to Chattanooga where a gunslinger is going to pick me up on her way down to the trail which starts in Sylacauga, Alabama near Flag Mountain. So it's a good ways um, and I'm going to be spending time in three different time zones on the day that I arrive. So it's going to be a long travel day for me uh, but it's okay because it's a trail that I really want to do and I don't mind investing a day 
and travel going home I won't have as much travel because I'm going to gain the time difference but going there is going to be a little bit grueling so I need to mentally prepare myself for the fact that I might be tired when I start the trail and then as I start to think about the trail two or three months out, I'm beginning to think about what gear I want and research the seasons, the average temperatures for where I'm going to be going, transportation and where I might be staying once I get to the location. So in this case, since Gunslinger is going to be driving us, we'll be able to drive right to the hostel and she's planning on leaving her car there uh, for the duration of the hike and then getting a ride back at the end of the trail to pick the car up again. If I was just flying by myself, then I might have to get local transportation or if I find a trail angel to get me to the hostel that I'll be spending the night at the first night before we start hiking, we have arranged for a shuttle the next morning. And it's important to do things like that early on because uh, for some trails, those book up very quickly. The Pinhoti is so close to the Appalachian Trail. A lot of the shuttle drivers in North Georgia are serving both trails and they book up very quickly in late spring. So I've locked down my transportation with a shuttle driver that I've used in the past. And when I reached out to him, he said, you know what? I am booked two months in advance already. So it was a good thing that I was looking at those things early on and making sure that I had my local travel arrangements secured so I didn't have to stress about that while I was either getting ready for the hike or actually while I'm on the trail. So logistics early on are a big component of planning for the through hike and then also thinking about the types of gear, especially if you need to make gear changes because of different seasons. Uh, when I went to California, it was balmy and beautiful and rainy, <laughs> very rainy, but it, the temperature wasn't bad. In the Appalachian Mountains, even in the Southern Appalachians, I know from experience that it can get pretty cold if it's wet and it can also be very hot. So I need to be prepared for much more extreme kind of temperatures than I needed to be prepared for in California. If my gear doesn't change a lot from through hike to through hike because I feel like I've got my kit pretty well dialed in, but I do need to make adjustments for weather. And in this case, knowing that I might have some very warm, humid days and some cooler nights, I've made some choices about gear and leaving some things home that I wouldn't always leave home. Like I'm gonna take a gamble, leave my rain pants behind, although I will have a rain jacket that'll make my pack a little bit lighter. And I'm bringing some extra video equipment. So I've upgraded some of my gear in that regard and that's gonna add a little bit more weight to my pack. So as I'm looking at my pack weight and trying to kind of keep it around that 15 pound mark, there's a lot of trade-offs to be made. Like, do I want to leave this home so that I can bring this other thing? Do I need to add something for safety? And I'm doing that in the form of an extra t-shirt that is bright neon yellow for roadwalks because this trail has a lot of roadwalks and those are things that I've learned through investigation and research in the months leading up to the time I'll be hiking. By the time I'm one month out, I should have all of that transportation locked down. I should have a pretty good feel from the trail, from researching, reading far out if there's a far out map, looking at Facebook groups for the trail, asking questions from people who are familiar with the trail about trail conditions and other things that I might want to know about, like availability of trail agents, places to resupply, all of that good stuff. I tend to start making notes uh, in my phone. I use the notes app on the iPhone and just I make a note for every trail and I put things in there like logistics and resupply towns and, you know, maybe places that I don't want to camp because people have had a bad experience there. Just things like that. All the little things that I need to know, I just dump into one note and I can refer back to that. And then when I'm ready to dive deeper into a specific topic, I've already captured some information. I was able to purchase a guidebook that a gentleman makes just for the Pinahoti that's got an incredible amount of detail in it. So I have a paper guidebook and then I've also printed off some maps. So I have kind of an overview map. And then on the flip side here, I printed out um, a, just a note that I found as far as the Pinahoti sections for a quick reference. And there are a lot of roadwalks on the Pinahoti. So like I can see here very early on, I'm gonna have a roadwalk and it says on here that it's gonna be 15 miles. So I can prepare myself for that. I can wear my bright yellow shirt that day so that I'm highly visible or make sure to hang it off the back of my pack. And then I have a section here where I've actually created my own spreadsheet. And I don't usually do this, but for this trail, because we have a specific time frame that we need to meet, I did go ahead and map out approximate dates and lengths of hikes for each day. I know that as soon as I get on this trail that this may absolutely change. It was just good for planning and for Gunslinger and I to be able to share our thoughts as far as where we thought we might want to camp, how far we might want to go, when we might want to stay in a hostel and things like that. So this is not something I always do in terms of trail planning, but it was very helpful.
helpful for this particular trip. Uh, one thing about the Pinhoti is that it is not one of the most popular trails. I found that when I, I've gone to work in my, at the Outfitter where I am, uh, out here on the Mountain West, people don't know what it is. It's not a trail like the Appalachian Trail with the universal name recognition. And because it's a little bit less popular trail, there's not necessarily as much, much information about it. So if you're gonna be hiking a trail that's more remote, you might want to allow a little bit more time in your planning process to be able to really thoroughly research the trail. Things like where's the water or is it gonna be a dry time or are there even trail angels that are accessible? Are you gonna to have to be more self-reliant? Uh, at least early on, there are gonna be places to stop every few days if we want to, but some trails you might be out for, you know, eight or 10 days before you have a chance to get back into town. So knowing those things well in advance can definitely help not only with your planning process, but also with your mindset for the hike. In that final month, I am making gear decisions, not only just what to take and what to leave behind, but if I have things that need to be upgraded or replaced, or if I want to try some new gear, there's not a whole lot of new stuff that I'm trying for this trip. Although I did pick up a Kula cloth because everybody talks about those and I I haven't used one before, so I thought, why not? I might as well take it on this trip and see if I like it or not. So I can share that with you who would need such a thing. <laughs> and then just clothing, like I said, I, I might be, instead of taking my micro fleece, I might take a Melly, which is like this one. It's just a great fleece pullover that's super, super comfortable. So I might take a weight penalty and take one of those instead of my mountain hardware um, air mesh is what that one's called that I usually take. And I also had to make some decisions about whether I was gonna check my bag since I'm flying. I wanted to carry it on so that I wouldn't have to mess with picking up a checked bag in the airport and take extra time from this very long travel day. So what I did was send some of my gear ahead to the hostel and that included my trekking poles because although some people have had good luck flying with them. Upon research, I learned that it is up to the discretion of an individual TSA agent whether they let you take those on the plane or not. And I certainly don't want to lose something as um, essential and expensive as trekking holes to the whims of a TSA agent and what kind of mood or mindset they might be in on any given day. So I sent those ahead. And since I had extra space in the box, I sent some extra food and I sent my puffy and my rain jacket and my stove because you can't fly with your stove or any any gas at all. So I'm going to pick up gas actually when I get into the hostel because I can't, the fuel canisters cannot be shipped. I filled up that box and I sent it onto the hostel well in advance so that I could make sure that it is there. And I'm actually glad I did that because I'm biting my nails a little bit. I'm leaving in a couple days and it's not arrived yet, but it should hopefully be arriving today. Because I shipped my puffy and my rain jacket, I might have a little bit of a problem if that box doesn't show up. So you do need to be careful what you put in the box. And I was a little just in a hurry and threw things in. I thought, oh, maybe that wasn't the smartest decision. And it might be cold in Colorado when I leave, so I have to consider that as well. I've already figured out that if that box either disappears or doesn't arrive, then I can get what I need in a pinch at a Walmart. So it'd be a little bit of a detour from the hiking, but at least I'd have my gear in hand. So that's kind of the timeline that I use for planning a through hike. There are six main categories of planning. So if you wanna look at it in a different way or even create a matrix, okay, this is the timeline, but these are the things that I need to do. Let me take you through those six items pretty quickly. Uh, the logistics is the first, and that's how are you gonna to get to the trail? How are you gonna to get to the town where you start the trail? Uh, but those are two different things. So one is like getting from where you live to where the trail is and then the other is getting from wherever you are coming from like a hotel to the trail itself so two different forms of logistics and also just scheduling things like time off work or do you need to take care of a pet and have them boarded or have somebody watch them and things like that those are logistics items that you will want to be considering as you are in that planning process the second of the six areas is training for your hike you need to physically prepare and i have done a video on that which you can watch up here if you are interested but basically you need to get out there and start moving your body especially if you are leading kind of a sedentary lifestyle so you don't necessarily need to hike with your pack on but that can be helpful for folks that are not used to carrying weight and you just need to get generally in shape make sure your feet are in shape make sure that your muscles are used to moving and hike and walk as much as you can so that your body is accustomed to logging some miles you don't want to jump out on the trail and just start hiking from zero basically 
play, it's going to create a very painful, painful day. So I encourage you to do any kind of training and conditioning that you are able to do. Something is better than nothing. So if you're in a situation where, you know, you have to work five days a week and you're sitting at a desk and can't get out, you know, find some time just to do some things. But the third area to consider is gear. And we talked about that a little bit already, but there might be things that you need to consider. Like, are there a lot of bugs? Do you need to carry bug spray? Um, Check all your gear. Even if you've got a tent that you love and a backpack that you love, things happen and materials degrade. So if you have not been out backpacking in a long time, you want to at least a couple of weeks before your hike, pull all that stuff out, make sure it's in good condition, maybe test setting it up and make sure that the fabrics are not deteriorating or you haven't lost any cords or tent stakes and things like that. So you want to review your gear and then make any adjustments necessary, any upgrades or replacements that are necessary well in advance, because you don't want to be in a situation where it's three days from starting your hike and you suddenly realize that you need to get a new tent or a new backpack. And I see this at the outfitter, people come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that this pack didn't fit me anymore and I've got to get a new one, but I'm supposed to leave tomorrow. That's not when you want to be making those kind of decisions. So look at your gear in advance and really think about your gear choices. That's going to make a huge difference in terms of how much you enjoy your hike. Right, Forrest? The fourth area is clothing, and I do separate that from gear, even though clothing is gear, it's it's technical, right? Uh, But what you're going to wear for the seasons, how you're going to be prepared for different types of weather, whether you want shorts or pants, depending on your level of activity, you may find that those things are fitting better or worse than they had in the past. You might want to treat them again with permethrin if you haven't done that in a while. Uh, You may decide that your socks are kind of worn out and it's time for a new pair of socks or liner socks or a sports bra or whatever it might be. Think about that clothing early on and then as you're training you can actually wear those clothes out on test hikes especially if you've bought something new and make sure that it's not kind of chafing or pinching or doing anything that would make you uncomfortable. Sometimes you think oh well this tag is you know sticking into my back and it's making me crazy. That's easy to remedy by cutting it out but if it's a seam or a zipper or something else that's making you crazy, you want to figure that out beforehand. So check out your clothes and make sure that you've got the right wardrobe prepared for the backpacking trip that you're planning to do. Number five is your food. What are you going to eat on the trail? You may have backpacked in the past and realized that there were certain things that you didn't enjoy or certain things that you crave, but then you also need to determine, are there special dietary needs that should be accommodated? So do you need to send food ahead? And if so, where are you going to send that? Uh, What types of food are appropriate for the weather where you're going to be at? Do you want to bring some hot drinks to have at bedtime because it's going to be cold and you want to kind of warm up your body before you go to sleep? By all means, you don't have to plan every meal, but having a good idea of what food you're going to take with you and what kind kinds of food you want to have is very helpful. Likewise, if you plan to dehydrate any backpacking food, then it's a good to have a jump start on that and be able to get those things prepped well before your hike. So that's something that you might want to be doing as far as a month or two in advance of your hike. The sixth category that I like to think about is financial preparation, because obviously if you're out on the trail, you are not working, at least not working a nine to five kind of job. So either you've got some passive income coming in from something like YouTube, which I do, and thank you all for watching and helping me fund my hike through YouTube. I really appreciate that. Planning for the money that you need, not only for your through hike, but also to sustain your lifestyle while you are away from home. You know, do you have to pay rent? Are you giving up your apartment? Uh, People do that if they're doing a long trail like the Appalachian Trail or the PCT sometimes. But if you've got a home and a mortgage, you're going to have to keep paying those bills, right? While you're gone, you will need money for hostels and for transportation and things like that. You will have bills that are probably going to keep coming in while you're hiking. So you need to plan how you're going to tackle those. Maybe you have a partner who can pay bills for you, or maybe you can set them on auto pay and possibly just, you know, make payments from the trails. That's what I'm going to be able to be doing. But I did check to make sure that the payments I plan to make from the trail, I can do from my phone easily. And I have done that in the past. It's not something that I'm leaving up to chance and hoping that I can do when I'm on the trail. I already have confirmed that that is an appropriate way for me to pay those bills. Setting aside the money that you need for the hike can be a big deal, especially if it's a longer hike. So if you think you're going to need a few thousand dollars to cover the cost of a hike, you want to start planning that back at the four to six month mark when you first decide to hike the trail or even before that you might just want a trail fund because you don't know where you're going to hike but you know that you do want to hike. Start stashing away some money. Start thinking about your bills and how they're going to be paid. Start thinking about on-trail expenses and how you're going to cover that and make sure that you have a little bit of contingency in there because gear does fail on the trail and you might somehow find yourself in a situation where your tent has been destroyed and you need to replace that quickly. You want to be in a good spot financially so that you can really enjoy that backpacking trip. In the final week before a through hike, there are a lot of things to do. One for me was shipping that package. Another is just checking the weather so I have an idea of what I might encounter. It's not 
probably going to affect my hike unless there's something really extreme coming in like a hurricane or a big winter storm or something like that. But it's nice to know just so you can mentally prepare. Hey, I'm probably going to be starting in the rain. That's the case for us for the Pinhoti. It looks like it's going to be a rainy day, but that's okay. Weather is weather, right? <laughs> it's not good and bad. It just is. I'm going to start prehydrating and drinking as much water as I can. I learned that from my experience on the Colorado Trail when I ended up with rhabdo and didn't realize it, which is a very dangerous condition. I'm not going to necessarily be more susceptible to rhabdo in the future, but to make sure that I absolutely am well hydrated before I start a hike, particularly if it's a hike in a hotter environment, which Alabama will be in the late spring. So I am trying to eat well and make sure that my body is well nourished before I even get on the trail so that I can enjoy that process and not be just dragging because I haven't had good hydration or good nutrition to prepare me for that hike. I am testing and charging all my electronics. I am making sure that I have the right cables for everything so that I don't find myself on the trail without a phone charging cable. I'm charging up my Garmin inReach so that I can use that right out of the gate. As soon as I step on the trail, I can have that active in case I have an emergency. I'm also checking my navigation, making sure that I've planned out where I expect to hike the first few days, where I plan to stop any um, hazards or water sources or things like that. I want to be familiar with that before I set foot on the trail. And I'm also double checking and confirming my travel arrangements. Um, just make sure that if I'm staying at a hostel or hotel first night, that I've got that booked, that I've got my shuttle drivers booked, that they all know I'm coming. They haven't forgotten about me or anything like that. Cause sometimes those things do happen or signals get crossed. So it's nice to sort of reconfirm all that before you head on, on the trail. And then I'm going to pack up my pack and I'm going to pack it in this case for air travel. So I need to make sure that I have everything that I would put in my pack and I'm not accidentally leaving something out because I'm packing it differently. So those are the last minute things that need to happen as well as just kind of, you know, letting your friends and loved ones know where you're going to be and how they can get in touch with you. The final things as far as work, you know, I'm taking a leave of absence. I had to do some things logistically to make sure that that leave was all lined up. There's a lot of stuff that comes up that you're just like, oh my gosh, I've got three days and here are all the things that I need to do. Just being organized with that process is extremely helpful. So that's what I do to prepare for a through hike and you may have some other tips. If you've been a through hiker as well, feel free to drop those down in the comments. I love to hear from everybody. I hope that you all enjoy your next hike and I will see you here next time.